Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Welcome to the ta uh, to the talk today. My name is Pedro Pina. I, I lead YouTube in EMEA, but today we are not here to talk about YouTube. Today we are here to talk about ANIM. ANIM stands for the Afghanistan National Institute of Music. And let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, it was founded in Kabul in 2010 to serve Afghan children with a full curriculum, including Western and traditional Afghan music, um, in direct response to rebuilding of Afghanistan and with a goal of restoring human and musical rights to Afghans. It's importantly a co-ed uh, <clears throat> environment with about 36 percent female students, which, as some of you may know, it's a rarity in Afghanistan. And it was the recipient of the 2018 Polar Music Prize, which, for those who don't know, it's the equivalent to the Nobel Prize of Music. The Afghan Youth Orchestra um, has performed globally, including in the Carnegie Hall and the Kennedy Center. This cool's all-female orchestra, Zara, toured the world and was hailed as a symbol of a modern and more progressive Afghanistan. Now, for those who don't know, and, and for, the tal for the Taliban, music is forbidden in Islam. And so therefore, as a result of the fall of the Afghan government in 2021, 273 ANIM students and staff were evacuated uh, from Afghanistan across uh, five flights. And they ended up in Portugal, where we are today. And they were granted uh, by the government, the Portuguese granted a group asylum. Today, we're here with the founder of the school, Dr. Sarmast. And today, we're here in Lisbon with him, and he's just next to me. Dr. Sarmast, it's a privilege and an honor to have you here today with us at, at the talks. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Sarmast. Um, he's an Afghan-Australian ethnomusicologist who founded and directed ANIM that I just presented to you guys. Um, he fled Afghanistan as a refugee in the 1990s during the Afghan Civil War. He returned to Afghan in the middle of 2000s and established ANMIN in 2010. He was injured in 2014 uh, by a Taliban who accused Dr. Samast of corrupting Afghan youth with music. And Dr. Samast lost part of the hearing as a result of this attack and was evacuated to Australia for medical treatment at that time. He won a Polar Music uh, Prize, the International Music Prize celebrating the power of the importance of music. It's a delight and an honor to have you at Google Portugal. I am Portuguese originally, although I live in London, I'm Portuguese, but I'm delighted to be in, London, in Lisbon and hosting you. For all of you guys at home, if you, um, we, we're going to continue this conversation. I'm going to, I'm going to move to a separate, separate room so that we have separate cameras. It's the way the stream works. And while they are setting it up, why don't you take a look at this following video? The orchestra was celebrated around the world as proof of how far Afghanistan and women's rights in particular had come. Afghans are thronging to Kabul's airport desperate to leave the country. It gives me a great pride to acknowledge Afghanistan music and musicians who once thought they would never play music again. We don't want anything more but to study, but to go to school, but to be allowed to stand up and say that, oh, I'm a human being, you know, like, respect me. different generation all women are achieving uh, their dreams without the struggles that we are facing today what a wonderful video and how inspiring this story is again dr samast welcome to lisbon as i said i'm portuguese so i have to start with this question how's portugal treating you 
Uh, thank you very much for, for having me today at the show. And uh, uh, I'm very pleased and amazed to show with you the experience of, of how we've been treated and have been received here in Lisbon and in Portugal generally. Uh, the entire group and, my, and myself, we are touched and moved with the warm reception of our community here. We are amazed by the hospital, hospitality of the Portuguese people. And we are amazed to see how generously the people of Portugal uh, standing ready to help us. And whenever we need anything and we reach with any uh, organization or individuals, uh, we see and we experience that how generously they assisting us and there to help us through. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased to hear that. Um, and I'm, I'm delighted to be here today hosting you and spending uh, the rest of our time just walking, you know, getting to know a little bit more about you and more importantly, uh, the, the wonderful work that you are doing with Anim. But before I do that, I would like to just step way back and and ask you where where does your passion comes from when it comes to music? Where did it all start? Um, I strongly believe in the soft power of music. For me, music is not just a, a type of entertainment or a, just a heart. Uh, for me, music is a powerful force that is capable to transform communities, transform lives, build bridges between people and contribute to economic development of any given countries. Uh, and why, where, I, where I get that belief in the power of music is the story of my father. A man uh, with whose name today the history of music in Afghanistan is closely associated and linked, but he grew up in an orphanage. And when the first music school in Afghanistan has been established within the Afghan army and uh, they were recruiting students, they went to the orphanages because of the stigma that existed against music in that time in Afghanistan and no one wanted their kids to go and to study music. And then the government decided to go to the orphanages to recruit students there. So from that orphanages, he enrolled in the music school program and through music, or thanks to music, his life has been changed and transformed that he not only had a better life, but also today the history of music is enormously or closely linked with his name. So it really comes from inspiration from your father then and, and his experience. Now, my understanding is that there is a deep and rich history and culture in Afghanistan associated to music, but at the same time, we hear that there are these forces that are against music. Can you can you can you give us a look for those who are less um, educated about this? Can you can you give us a bit of a perspective of what what is this tension about? The history of music or the music history of Afghanistan is very very rich. Music was always an important element or, in, or an important part of social and cultural life of Afghanistan. And the people of Afghanistan love music. What's happening today with music and what's happened back in 1996 when the Taliban for the first time were in power uh, and when they entirely banned uh, music in Afghanistan and deprived the people, the people of Afghanistan from their musical rights, it has nothing to do with Islam. It has nothing to do with the Afghan culture. It is mainly based on the narrow interpretation of Islamic uh, values and Islamic teachings rather than any explicit reference on ban of music in Islam. It clearly shows that how much Taliban are ignorant even about the Islamic teachings. If Holy Quran does not ban music, who are the Taliban to come up with the idea that music is banned in Islam? It clearly shows that the Taliban are not only aware of Islamic teaching, but they are also moving against Islamic values, against teaching by banning music in Afghanistan. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so, so given that context, what inspired you, specifically you, to uh, begin Anim? Where, where was that idea spark? You know, when, when was the first spark of that idea, and how? How, do you, how did you evolve it and how do you finally found it? <clears throat> um, 
when music was banned in Afghanistan or when Afghanistan was uh, drowning in civil war and the people of Afghanistan and the musicians of Afghanistan did not have much opportunity there because of the civil war first and then because of the Taliban to revive Afghan musical tradition, to promote music education in Afghanistan and to use the soft power of music to transform communities and to make... Uh, a tangible contribution to the peace uh, and the uh, reestablishment of unity in Afghanistan back in 19 uh, sorry in 2006 when the Taliban in 2001 uh, were removed from uh, from war uh, sorry from power in Afghanistan I returned to Afghanistan to see what was the impact of the civil war the immigration of Afghan musicians and the draconian policies of the Taliban on the music scene of Afghanistan and I was well aware that uh, during the Taliban time, the people of Afghanistan were deprived from their musical rights. And also music was taken out of the life of Afghan people. And the people of Afghanistan or the nation or the entire nation has been turned into a silent nation. So uh, I went to Afghanistan back in 2005 to see what's happened and what I can do in order to bring back music to Afghanistan and also to, re to ensure the musical rights of the Afghan people and also to use the soft power of music to make a contribution to the reestablishment of just and civil society in Afghanistan to music. I went in 2004, first time in Afghanistan, and then in 2007, and then in 2008, to negotiate with the Afghan politician and with the Afghan government the condition for establishment of a dedicated music education program and also to explain the importance of music education in the life of Afghan community and also the importance of music education in the betterment of Afghan community and in the betterment of the life of Afghan children. And then in 2008, I moved to Afghanistan uh, to be there with the people of Afghanistan and also to make sure that uh, the project or the, my, my mission and also my vision for music and the use of music in Afghanistan is imp implemented in life. So I went there after convincing the Afghan government, it was significantly important also to convince the international community of donors to invest in music and music education and in arts and culture generally. My argument in that time was, and still I strongly believe that we, when we will be never ever able to bring to Afghanistan a long and sustainable peace unless we invest in arts and culture. It's arts, culture, and education which can serve us uh, as a strong alternative to the ideology of extremism, to the ideology of the Taliban. I was arguing for this in the past 14 years, and that's I will be still arguing in the coming years to come. If we want Taliban to be removed and if we want to bring long and lasting peace and establishing a just and civil society in Afghanistan, we have to invest in arts and culture. That's what we, what took me back to Afghanistan and I still committed if there would be an opportunity to return to Afghanistan to use the power of music to stand against radicalism and fundamental fundamentalism in Afghanistan. That's incredibly powerful. And um, so, so thank you for that. Thank you for that perspective. Now, you then decided to found the, the school, sometimes at your own personal risk, which is incredible. And importantly, you introduced this idea of teaching girls about music. And you developed this all girl orchestra, Zara, that I mentioned before, which has toured the world. Can you, can you give us a little bit of a perspective of where that that additional idea came from and your your own point of view on the importance of bringing and teaching music to girls as well? One of the objectives or uh, mm -hmm. goal of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music was not only to ensure gender equality in music in Afghanistan, but also to empower the girls and the women of Afghanistan through music and music education. And that's why annually, when we've been enrolling new students in, into our program, 50% of the new enrollment has been reserved for the Afghan girls and women. We begin our program in 2010 with only one girl. But in 2021, when 
<clears throat> we uh, we were very much uh, in charge of musical life in Afghanistan. Uh, one third of the student body of the uh, of the school were uh, female students, and uh, very uh, within a very short period of time, we managed to move towards the uh, towards the uh, insurance uh, of gender equality in music and music education in our program. And um, girls uh, were equally represented in all ensemble and orchestras of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music. But also boys in our school were always um, uh, much more active. They were coming there with their own ensemble and orchestras and with their rock ensemble, fusion ensemble, uh, hip hop music, music ensemble. But one day I received a young girl into my office uh, by the name of Mina. Mina was a trumpet player. She came and asked me, the Dr. Samas, can we have our own uh, musical ensemble? I, I, I said, who we? He said, that, oh, me and my friends. And I said, of course, you can have a, your own musical ensemble. And she said, can we have a teacher, a faculty to help and to assist with the arrangement of music? And I said, of course, we're going to gifts or assign someone to help you with, with arranging music for, you, for your ensemble. Tell me how many people is in the, the, your group and what kind of ensemble do you do you, what do you plan to establish? Well, she said there's five of us or four or five. I can't remember exactly, but she said we want to have uh, up, uh, an ensemble of which will be playing popular music. So then I assigned a faculty of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music, Allegra Bogus, to help these five kids uh, with their music program and to develop a repertoire for the for this group of students. And within a month, Allegra reached to my office and said, the Dr. Sarma, there's a huge interest within the female community to join this ensemble. And the number of musicians in this group is increasing in a daily basis. What we should do? And I said, listen, that's a good blessing. Let's form an all-women ensemble for Afghanistan. And in this minute, the ensemble of Zora come into existence. That's incredible. What a story. Um, and here you were full of momentum. Um, and then unfortunately, the events of uh, 2020 and 2021 happened. Um, and you were forced to leave Afghanistan. Um, and you ended up in Lisbon, as we said before. But I'd like to want us to share with us what was that journey about and how did it start? When, when, was, when was that moment where you said, we need to leave? And what did you do the moment you realized you needed to leave Afghanistan? And how did you decide that you needed to leave together with all the students? And what, would that, what was that journey about? We'd, we'd love to, if you can share that with us. <clears throat> uh, the return of the Taliban to power was uh, totally unexpected. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally never believed that the Taliban will return back to power in Afghanistan. Uh, back in July, I left Afghanistan to go to Australia to receive my treatment. I was in Australia when the uh, when that fall of different districts uh, began to the Taliban. And again, I was uh, expecting that the Afghan army gonna take back those districts. And uh, falling of districts did, for the in war is a quite normal pra normal practice. One day you're gonna win, and the next day you're gonna lose. But uh, I was in Australia when the fall of the provinces began. And within the less than, a, uh, less than a 10 days, the Taliban reached on the gates of Kabul. And that was the moment that uh, I know I got, a, I got uh, to, to agree with the realities that the return of the Taliban is a reality right now. And I could see that uh, the betrayal within the Afghan government paved the way for the Taliban return to power. It is not that the Taliban forcibly defeated the Afghan army or defeated the Afghan people. It was the Afghan politician and also the international community who recognized a terrorist group de facto when they began negotiating with them. When they negotiate a peace settlement with a group of terrorists on the expense of Afghan people and on the expense of Afghan government. But anyway, on, on the 13th of August, when the Taliban reached uh, on the gates of Kabul, it was obvious that the Taliban are coming into power. And I began to 
see and to brainstorm what we, what we should do. I knew that the history of the Taliban, the, the, the history of the first time of the Taliban in power was still very fresh. And we, we knew that's what's going to happen with music and musician when the Taliban come into powers. And that's why on that day, I reached out to Friends of Anim, which is a non-for-profit non organization, which has been helping out Afghanistan National Institute of Music since 2015, 2016, to have a brainstorm uh, session. What we should do, how, how we can help uh, the students of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music, the faculty of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music, and the staff of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music. That was a top priority, how we can provide safety and security to our community. And the second issue always was how we can save Anim or how we can make sure that Anim continues its life in the future. And that's in that moment, we began reaching out uh, to our network and also reaching out to various countries to see who is ready to accept us as a group as a group that definitely by the return of the Taliban, they will, they will not be never ever again able while the Taliban in power to make music. It's not just to make music, but also it was very obvious that they're going to become a subject of a systematic discrimination and harassment by the Taliban. And today we can see what's happening with music and musicians in Afghanistan. And in that moment, I reached out to many countries uh, to see who can help us. And I was extremely amazed and delighted when I received a message, uh, an email message from uh, Portugal, that the government of Portugal received our appeal and they're ready to accept us as a group, give us asylum as a group, and also to help us to reconstitute the Afghanistan National Institute of Music in exile, and also to, rev to preserve Afghan musical tradition outside Afghanistan while music is banned in Afghanistan and musicians are subject of a daily discrimination and harassment. That is incredible. And so what, there must have been like, you must have felt it was like a gift you were not expecting. What, what a wonderful, what a wonderful uh, piece of news. Um, and how was the whole translation? How was the arrival? Can you give us a bit of a, can give us a bit of a sense of how how were the first days in Lisbon, in a foreign country, in a foreign city for a lot of the students and how the settling in happened? Uh, the entire procedure, the process, how we managed to get out of Afghanistan, it was not an easy task. Mm -hmm. And uh, we attempted first time on the 28th of August to leave Afghanistan as we've been uh, given assurances by member of the international community that they would be able to get us out of Afghanistan uh, in the emergency program out of Afghanistan. But unfortunately, after the suicide bombing around the airport, the situation changed and the Taliban took control of the Kabul mm -hmm. airport. Uh, on the 28th of August, after a big of drama and uh, the efforts to get us in, inside of the airports, we were not able to leave and then the evacuation stopped on the after the 31st of august but again we did not give up we 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 continued to find a way to get our community out of afghanistan and and eventually in october the first group of a uh, member of our community over 100 people were out of afghanistan and slowly the issue of the passport which was the biggest challenge to get our community out of afghanistan and that's one one of the reasons that we were not able to leave afghanistan for months until the government of Qatar come forward to help us with the to solve that problem and to facilitate our and help with the with obtaining of the of passport for our groups eventually we made our way to Doha and from Doha to Lisbon and in Lisbon you ended up in the in the comparable music institution that exists in in the Portuguese in the in in, in the Portuguese in, in Portugal and um, how was how was that contact with the with the Portuguese students and with the Portuguese faculty of uh, of the music uh, conservatory of, of Lisbon? Yeah, as I noted earlier at the, at the beginning of our, our conversation, we've been very, very warmly received here in Portugal by the people and by the government of Portugal. Our group has, uh, has been divided into five groups. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
uh, who've been housed in emergency uh, housing or accommodation in different parts of Portugal. But of course, we arrived in a in a very uh, uh, in a time when it was the it was the celebration of the Christmas year, the new year, and then election. But of course, it was uh, the our the arrival time has been coinciding with the. Uh, peak of coronavirus once again here in Lisbon and in Portugal. So, and our community were not uh, vaccinated. Uh, in spite of all these challenges with the support of the Portuguese people and various organizations, we managed to uh, not only provide health security to our students, and but also slowly to go through the office procedures uh, and uh, legal procedures, which was on the way of our students to be begin uh, their integration into the Portuguese into the in, in, Portugal community. Um, after two months, eventually our students returned back to school uh, to begin their general education. And also we are extremely uh, pleased and also grateful to the Ministry of Education, the National Conservatory of Music of Lisbon, and the Secondary School of Marcus uh, Pombal to, to accept the entire anim student body together and enroll them in one school or in two program that which is very closely linked to each other then uh, uh, share with them the educational program but also the resources the infrastructure the teachers and now our students are doing very very well with their schooling they're making friends with the within the portuguese community and they are also making a musical impact on the lisbon cultural life what a wonderful, what an incredible, incredible story and turn of events. Um, <clears throat> is it fair to say that you may want to rebuild Anim in exile while you wait for a potential return to Afghanistan? What What are your hopes and dreams and your when you're thinking about the future? Well, how 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 do you how do you describe that future and and what are your plans for Anim now that you are here? <coughs> Uh, one of the reasons that we've been re uh, accepted to Portugal as a group and we also uh, decided to come to Portugal and we stopped attempting to get asylum from somewhere else. It was the generous offer of the government of Portugal not only to receive our group but also to help with the reestablishment or reconstitution of Anim here in exile. Mm -hmm. We clearly understand that it's, uh, uh, it's not an easy task. It, we need time. Uh, it's not just that to have the right infrastructure, but also to go through all the legal procedures to enroll and to register an name here as, a, as an educational program. But meanwhile, while we're working and continuing our efforts together with the Portuguese government and friends of Anim in Portugal, we also were, but it's important not to keep our students with the hope that they will be studying in their own school. But at the same time, when we are talking about the establishment of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music, it's not that we, we will be going to establish a music program only for Afghan community here or only for Anim students here. We mm -hmm. don't want to create another uh, uh, an island uh, segregated or separated from the educational and cultural life of Portugal. Uh, when we succeed to establish the Afghanistan National Institute of Music, it will be an integral part of educational and cultural life of Portugal. And it will be accessible to every member of the Portuguese community, regardless of their ethnicity, uh, so social circumstances, mm. uh, uh, race or religion. So we will be establishing the Afghanistan National Institute of Music with the same mission here to transform the life of disadvantaged children and therefore the school will be for while it will be open to everyone it will be focusing on the disadvantaged children of the poor uh, of the first of all in lisbon which is uh, in lisbon so our school will be aiming to provide quality general and music education to uh, to to the children of refugees, but also to the children of low income families. But again, it will be accessible to the rest of community as well. In in a fully integrated mode. So that is a great mission uh, and and a great perspective for the future. Um, I was uh, I was privileged to be in the audience yesterday, uh, invited by you. So thank you to see um, and witness a a performance of your orchestra. Uh, 
those Afghan kids that you brought from Kabul um, in front of uh, Yo-Yo Ma. For, for those who don't know Yo-Yo Ma, he's a massive star in the classical music scene. I've, I've paid a lot of money before in my life to watch him live and just like that in the school, the Portuguese school that is now harboring Anim, um, I was able to see Yo-Yo Ma sitting next to the students, playing with them, uh, and and being a, a great supporter of this initiative. So, Dr. Sermast, I, I wanted us to... Um, I, I would like you to, if possible, to explain how wh what is your connection with Yo-Yo Ma? Yo-Yo Ma is a, is a huge figure in the music scene globally. And um, how did he end up in Lisbon in a, in a given week of, uh, of the month of March where we are? And why did he sit down with your, with your students? Why did he spend time with your students? Why did he play with your students for us? And I know privately he did that as well. What, what is that connection and what kind of support are you getting from him? Uh, before I come to that particular question about the, our association or our relationship with Yo Yo Ma, I yeah. just would like to note that uh, our students and various ensemble of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music uh, already began to make a, a great impact on the cultural and musical life here in Portugal with their playing. Mm -hmm and re receiving many requests from various organizations and music festival and uh, 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 music uh, presenters to perform. So just in the last week, there's a number of performances took place, and one of them was this wonderful, unforgettable uh, performance alongside the legendary uh, Yo-Yo Ma. So our relationship with you, my personal relationship with Yo-Yo Ma goes back to 2014 and then to 2017 when I met him first time in at the World Economic Forum. But also that uh, at the 2017, he also uh, met with this uh, with the member of the Zora Orchestra at Davos. But uh, uh, he got more and more involved with the Afghanistan National Institute of Music the, during our evacuation, thanks to the friends of Anim who reconnected us with you. Yo -yo Ma during the evacuation process. And uh, I'm also very pleased to see that he was one of the key figures who played a significant role in the evacuation of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music and also connecting us with uh, many politicians around the world, uh, who, including connecting us with the government of Qatar, who played a significant role in our evacuation process. So he was always uh, had a kind of relationship with the Afghanistan National Institute of Music, but in the last eight months, he was much more involved with our evacuation and also still is very committed to help us here to maintain our program and to reconstitute an him here and to help our students in any way that is possible and it can help us. And one of the very first uh, initiatives that come forward, again, that initiative has been initiated through the Friends of Anim and Yoya himself, to travel uh, to Lisbon to, to inspire our students, to motivate our students, and also to speak about the importance of music uh, in bringing people close to each other and building bridges between uh, civilization and communities. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very grateful to Yoya, and I, uh, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to him once again to give and uh, or to gift that wonderful day yesterday, not only to the students of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music, but to, to their peers, the Portuguese students who share their resources, their music education with our students currently uh, at the National Conservatory of Music. It was not just that performance yesterday, but Yo-Yo stayed all day with our students, and in the afternoon he visited our emergency accommodation, uh, uh, which is under the patronage of Red Cross, <coughs> to meet with the students personally, to meet students, small groups, to teach our students, to talk to them and to see how we can contribute in the future and also to talk to our students that is committed to help them uh, in the future. But the day yesterday was indeed unforgettable, but it was also uh, very inspiring to our students, to young musicians of the National Conservatory and generally to the Portuguese community to see how music can uh, bring people together. And uh, I was also very touched by speech of Yoyama and how, uh, the, the, how beautifully he put it yesterday in his speech that 
culture is at the beginning of the life and also in the end of the life. And it's also culture is the best uh, defense against anything else that's happening in this world. Yeah, it was it was an incredible moment. And, and I could tell that the presence of uh, uh, Yo-Yo Ma was, was, was incredibly important for your students. It was incredibly important for the Portuguese students. It was in, important for everyone in that room. And, and the fact that there is this connection and this, if you will, patronage and, 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 and presence of, uh, of Yo-Yo um, in, uh, in Lisbon and, and, and specifically around the initiatives of Anim clearly left a mark uh, i could tell by speaking to people after the, the the meeting that that was that was a, an incredible moment uh, one of those that will stay in my mind forever so thank you again for for inviting us to to be there um you often talk uh, about music as a basic human right you mentioned this at the beginning of our session um you believe you talk about music as a force for peace as a way to fight extremism um it's at the core really of your mission. So can you tell us what does music and, and freedom of expression mean to you and why and where do you want to take this fight next and this message next? Um, yes, for me, I, I, I noted earlier that music is not just a type of entertainment or art. So for me, music is, in addition to everything else, it is a human rights. It is part of the human rights. Uh, uh, any human being, including children, youths, regardless of the age of the people, they have the right to have access to music. They have the right to express themselves freely through music. Uh, it is a right to listen to music, to play music, and to learn music. It's a, it's a right to make a living through music. It's a right to receive a just honorarium through music. And it's also a right to have access to all means and facilities and platform to share the beauty of music with the rest of the communities. But unfortunately, today, when I'm speaking here in front of you, once again, the people of Afghanistan are deprived from all those rights. Once again, the people of Afghanistan are turned forcibly into silence. Once again, the people of Afghanistan do not have the right to listen to music, to learn music, to play music, to make a living through music. Shocking images are emerging from Afghanistan of the discrimination of Taliban against music and musicians. Shocking images are emerging again from Afghanistan of the destruction of musical instruments. Uh, I've been shocked when, uh, when I saw a video uh, that has been filmed in the province of uh, Paktia in Afghanistan when a poor musician was forced to watch how Taliban were uh, destroying its musical instruments and burning its instruments and forcing him to repent of what they've been doing, uh, repent for, uh, for uh, delivering smile and happiness to the people of Afghanistan to music. I was shocked when I saw that the musicians were forced to destroy musical instruments and the Taliban were making fun of them. And I, 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 and I'm, I know that today, the, the, today, there's no much attention to the miseries of music and musician in Afghanistan. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity and the, this platform also to call to the international community that please, when you are uh, giving red carpet to the Taliban and you're getting into negotiation with the Taliban, do not forget about the musical rights of Afghan people. When you're talking about women's rights to Afghanistan, which is significantly important to, the, to be returned to the women of Afghanistan, but it's also important when we are talking about human rights, we should not forget about the musical rights of Afghan people. We should not forget about Afghan musicians. We should not forget about the uh, rights of Afghan musicians to make make a living and to have all the platform in your disposal to share the beauty of music with the rest of community and to make a contribution to the healing process of uh, Afghan people through music. Thank you. Uh, powerful messages. Um, Afghan, Afghanistan is now a silent nation, um, as you've shared with us. And if people are back home and they want to do something, um, what can they do to help you and help others save and preserve the Afghan music, uh, which is such an important part of the cultural heritage of the country. Um, I know people at home want to do something about this. I'm sure they're inspired by you. What can they do? Uh, first of all, I, I would like to call to you everyone that please raise awareness about 
the polite of Afghan music and musicians. Mm -hmm. Raise aware, awareness and keep your governments accountable, not to negotiate with the Taliban. Mm -hmm. Keep the Taliban accountable to return the women rights, educational mm -hmm. rights of women of Afghanistan, rights to Afghan women to be part of the community and have the right to make uh, to work and to be uh, uh, be part of the social and political life of afghanistan but at the same time please keep your governments uh, accountable that to not to negotiate by, with the taliban until the taliban re respecting human rights women rights but also cultural rights and musical rights of the afghan people very clear uh, everyone has homework now um, Dr. Sarmast, I could be here for hours talking to you, but I'll have to start wrapping up. Um, I'm going to probably ask you one final question and then we're going to leave our talks, uh, our talk today. Um, and the last question is, um, what are your plans for the next year? What, what, how, what do you envisage your activity to be for the next year as you continue to uh, settle this wonderful students in Portugal and start spreading the, 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 the wonderful heritage of the Afghan music in the Portuguese community. Uh, of course, the, the mine, uh, the mine uh, work or my responsibility in the coming weeks and coming months to come, uh, to months, to, months uh, is to ensure that the uh, students of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music stay together make music together, make music with the Portuguese communities. But at the same time, I, I would be keep drumming up support for the music and musician of Afghanistan. And uh, I'll be continuing to do advocacy for the, the musical rights of the Afghan people, human rights in Afghanistan, but most importantly, women rights in Afghanistan as well. That's wonderful. All right, we're going to end up here. Dr. Sarmast, I cannot thank you enough for even spending this few hours with us here at Google Lisbon and Google Portugal. I want you to know that it's truly a privilege to have you with us. It is incredibly inspiring. The work that you are doing with these children is incredibly inspiring, um, as is the message that music is a human right, that is a force for peace. It is a soft power that has to be used by politicians and that eventually all of us should contribute in the international community to make Afghanistan not a silent country or a nation, but introduce music again back to a country that so deserves it. So thank you for inspiring us uh, in this few minutes that we spend together. Um, if you want to know more, for all of you uh, at home, if you want to know more about ANIM, and if you want to know how you can help, please go to anim-music.org. The It's already on the YouTube um, description below here in this video. Um, go to anim-music.org and find out more. If you happen to be in Lisbon, find out if they're playing somewhere. Come and meet Dr. Samash. Uh, Samarst, please provide some help. And Dr. Samarst, once again, this was lovely. Thank you so much for finding time to be with us this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.